Steel MS460 Chainsaw is a workhorse. Originally designed for forced air cooling and short burst of full throttle operations, it's completely out of its element on a bicycle. Customized by one of the best builders in the hobby, in an attempt to take full advantage of the potential this jug has to offer, let's find out what happens when you push a motor that does not like to go slow for 56 miles. Experimentation is a huge part of this hobby, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, especially considering this motorsport is relatively cheap compared to others. I've played with plenty random modifications myself and different motor configurations, but after dealing with so many headaches, I find the reliable builds to be the practical way to go. Though recently inspired by DLH's performance motor winning a race in SoCal, I've been inspired to rebuild mine over the holidays, and I think I can get it right this time, so wish me luck. The biggest issue I have with experimentation and performance builds in this hobby, and this is just my opinion, is that you'll often find individuals squeeze every last ounce of performance out of a motor, take it for a couple short rides, and then say it's the best thing in the world. And whereas many of these wrist-twisting full-throttle pulls are very appealing, they can often distract you from everything else that matters when it comes to these builds. You see, most of us know the MS460 hybrid builds are powerful. There's no denying that. I don't think they have the top end of a Minarelli, at least not without a pipe, but they certainly have the torque. What I want to know and help show you is, are these actually practical motors to run as a daily driver? Do they shine in any situations where the cheap China doll motors just don't cut it? In hobbies like this, you'll find keyboard warriors and what I like to call garage warriors. These are individuals who have most of their time spent modifying and building things than actually riding them. And when you do see them ride them, it's always on the same streets, going the same path, the same short trips over and over. But at the end of the day, it's always the same. They'll brag about their builds and then hop in their car to go to work. This MS460 hybrid motor was built by MFL Bikes. I'll leave a link to his YouTube channel in the description. Myself being an individual who rides a bike every single day and goes on weekly adventure trips, my motors see a lot of wear and tear. There's a good chance if it can survive me, it'll survive the casual riders.
You know I like to end on a high note, so let's get the negatives out of the way first. Starting with price. If you're a budget-minded individual, this is definitely not the motor for you. Not the actual motor itself, it's relatively reasonable. I think I purchased mine for $325 if my memory is correct, or you could build one yourself significantly cheaper. Price comes in the build requirements. In the scale of power for what you can stick on a bicycle, this motor has an immense amount of torque and will destroy cheap frames. Even MFL Bikes has gone through three Cranbrooks, as far as I know, since he's been testing these motors. They've been snapping frames, breaking welts. These need sturdy frames and wheel sets and forks and everything. Uh, even the bike I'm riding on at the moment is not the final configuration that this motor would be on. If I do keep it on this frame, I'll be getting some Gemini wheels and a much stronger front fork, as well as hydraulic brakes. This motor is dangerous if put on something cheap, so be careful. Frame fitment without customizing your exhaust. As you can see, I'm using the standard chainsaw exhaust, which works just fine, but it's bulky. You need a lot of room to fit this in a frame. So the gas bike builds are probably the way to go, unless you plan on making your own exhaust system or adapting a pipe that can fit a bicycle. The Cranbrook frame will work as far as fitment, but as we discussed earlier, it's a terrible idea if you want to survive. Noise level. Once again, without a custom exhaust and silencer, this is not a practical bike to ride due to how loud it is. Now, I know many of you love loud motors, and that's fine, but if you're going to use it as a daily driver, it's not practical. Not only would this be a burden to your neighbors, but halfway through my 56 mile round trip, I had to stop and get some earplugs. I just couldn't take it anymore. It was giving me a headache. It's very draining in the long run. Poor low speed performance. This motor does not like to go slow. Now, if you're into performance motors, you probably don't care about that, but if you're going to use it as a daily driver, it's going to be an issue, simply because I don't like going 35 miles an hour all the time, which is what this motor will do as a minimum. Below that, it runs pretty rough. I have a 36.2 sprocket on here to keep it loaded down. A larger sprocket will put less load on the motor and probably give you even worse results. A smaller sprocket may allow you to run lower RPMs smoother because it loads the motor, but your cruising speed is going to be higher. So really, I can't find a sweet spot on this motor. You're going to be above 30 miles an hour to keep this thing running smooth. Heat buildup and hot climate operations. These are robust jugs and they can stand up to a fair bit of abuse. However, they are designed for forced air cooling. So I worry about these in the summer months, trying to repeat this trip. Who knows if it would do it. However, being able to do it in the mid 60 degrees proved to me that this motor will be capable of short and mid range trips for daily operations. However, if you plan on using it for long range adventure rides, maybe save it for the cooler months. All right, so let's move on to some of the pros. And just as a reminder, in case it wasn't clear earlier in the video, my pros and cons about this motor are for daily driver operations and practicality. Not for racers, not for somebody who just wants to slap the most powerful thing they can on a bike and see what happens. This is for somebody who wants to use it every day. Power. It should come as no surprise. This is a very powerful motor when compared to any China Doll or YD100. It's a night and day difference. The low and mid-range torque on this thing will be really, really good for heavy set individuals. If you're 240 plus pounds and or going to be carrying a lot of cargo, this might be a motor you would want to look into. Myself at 210 pounds, I'm not exactly a lightweight rider and this motor is terrifying. It's got more power than I'm ever going to need in any situation. The motor has a piston port design and this is good for simplicity. It's just one less thing to worry about. No intake air leaks that can get around a reed valve or no broken reed flaps that can fall into the motor. Fuel efficiency. This was surprisingly impressive, possibly even the best I've tested so far. Maybe I just got really lucky with the tune. I left with a full tank of gas after 56 miles I got back and still had almost half a tank. The Zeta Don holds almost a gallon. It's about 0.9 gallons. I drained the tank to see what was left, and this is what I had left. So a little bit less than half a gallon, maybe a third. I'm confident that this bike with this motor will get 90 miles to the tank and possibly even 100 miles to the gallon. Price and availability of replacement components. 
and all the bottom ends a simple YD100. So those are easy to find parts for pretty much everywhere. And the top ends are still MS460, and those are all over Amazon and eBay. Now they can vary wildly in quality and price. I've seen a top end replacement kit on Amazon go for 40 bucks, and I'm sure the still's official replacement probably about 150. All things considered, you could pick either one and see how they do. It's nice to have all the options. User experience and reliability. Well, for reliability, I've only owned it for a few months and put a few hundred miles on it, including the test ride you've seen today. I show promising results, so for now, I'm going to say reliability is good. As far as the user experience, these motors seem to be a lot less finicky and picky as compared to something like the Minarelli hybrids, which require a near-perfect tune from day one, otherwise they just give you grief. In the short amount of time I was choosing the jets to get the tune as good as I could, it didn't give me any grief when the tune was poor. No soft seizures or any issues like that. So in short, if you're a rookie builder trying to get into these performance builds, the chainsaw hybrids will probably give you an easier time than the Minarellis. And once again, because I know some people have a short memory, this is for daily driving practicality. I am not a racer and I'm not racing my motors. This is long duration, sustained throttle operations. So, yeah. Anyways, that's about all I got for now on the MS460 build. It's a strong motor, which has some practical uses in niche situations. But in my personal opinion, for most people, it's an overkill motor. This is something you build or buy because it's what you know you want or need. If you just willy-nilly throw it on a bike without paying attention to anything else, you're probably going to get hurt, so be careful. So I hope you guys got some useful information out of today's video, or at the very least, were mildly entertained. And for the individuals who just enjoy hearing some good old brat from a two-stroke, I'll leave you with some cruising footage. Until next time, ride safe.